Green Zevon, the Shah Khan, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about persistent or stored XSS vulnerabilities. Just like the reflected XSS, stored XSS is caused when the user input is improperly reflected back into an HTML page or a web page. Now, the main difference between these two XSS types are the existence the way they reflect reflective excess is not permanent the store excess is permanent like let me give you an example here is a simple commenting system here where users can enter their comments Now as you can see that whenever I reload this page the comment will be there as you can see uh, uh, there the comment doesn't need to be in the URL to show every time it's actually saved in the sites database now if there is an XSS vulnerability in the commenting system our XSS payload will be saved in the sites database so whenever anyone open this URL the XSS will be triggered now as you can see here A JavaScript prompt is executed. Now, the interesting thing is it only executes when the normal URL is given to a victim. There is no need to be, it's no need to include any kind of, you know, payload in the URL as it's already injected in the site's database. So, by simply, by simply browsing to this URL, our exploit or our payload will be triggered. So that's stored access. This is one of the most critical type of access vulnerability. This can cause permanent damage to an application. Like we can inject key loggers here. We can change the entire contents. We got full control over JavaScript in this area. We can inject any kind of code here permanently. Like we can disable content, we can inject key logger. So if anyone type here password or any, or any other thing, it will be recorded and will be able to capture keystrokes. This can be used to do multiple attacks as we got whole control over JavaScript here. We'll discuss its exploitation in the next lectures. So that's all for now. Greg Zerwan, Deshar Khan, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about flash based cross site scripting. Just like we discussed in our previous lesson, cross site scripting is an attack that can allow an attacker to execute JavaScript commands. By using those commands, a remote attacker can compromise a user account and can perform different types of attacks. In Flash XSS, a remote attacker is able to execute XSS attack by using Flash files or you can say .swf files. By using this file and you can see the action script here. Right here in the get URL function, a JavaScript alert is used. You can see here. Right here, this is a an, an alert dialog that is used for harmless demonstration of XSS attack. So when the flash file is loaded into browser, once executed, we'll execute the JavaScript code. 
which is this one as you can see here now suppose there is an application that allows us to upload any kind of file and if we upload this file dot xss dot swf having the code this having this code inside it then it is possible to do a java uh, do a flash based xss attack once loaded properly you can see that our javascript code is executed here this is how to perform a flash based xss attack Greg Zerwan Deshawar Khan and in this lesson we're going to learn how to exploit an XSS vulnerability. In our previous lesson we discussed how to identify different kind of XSS vulnerability. Here we have a test application and we are going to test if this is vulnerable to XSS vulnerability. In order to start a test I'm going to use double quotation and a closing tag here. So if it reflects in attribute context, then we will be able to execute our payload. I'm using an image tag with an invalid source, so it will return an error using an on error event handler to execute my code here. In this case, let's use prompt one for demonstration. And we got our code executed. In XSS vulnerability, we can execute JavaScript commands and we got full control over everything in the application on the client side and we can access cookies, we can access the source code and anything we want. Now let's try to steal the cookies off this web page. I'm going to start a listener first. We can use ncat or NC. So any get request sent to this will be shown here. Now what we have to do next is that we have to create a payload first. So our code will be here instead of prompt. I'm going to use the fetch function. So this will send a get request to my IP address on port 1338. Now next we have to include the value of document.cookie. This will be the value of cookies being used in the application. This will what this function will do is that this will send the cookies to my IP address. So let's try this payload and see if this works. and we got the cookies here as you can see that we got the cookie value here we can get anything we want let's try accessing the source code instead of document cookie we'll use encode uri component so our value will be url encoded and we will use document dot body dot inner html this will access the source code Let's try if if this works. And we got our source code here. Let's try to decode it. URL decode and you can see the entire source code here. Using the same technique we can capture any kind of source code on the victims or client side. So using this technique we can capture different kind of values from the victim. That's the basic exploitation of XSS vulnerability.